What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. I am Nicholas. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat BDGE Fantasy Football. As always, every single Friday leading up to your drafts, we are doing a 2019 Fantasy Football Mock Draft. We'll be doing that on the Draft app on draft.com. You can come mock draft with me. This is the single best way to help you prepare for your fantasy football drafts because the ADPs are very accurate. People don't draft kickers and defenses in the seventh round because we don't draft with kickers and defenses. So I open this up to my subscribers and they fill up very quickly. We are doing a 12-man draft. Now it automatically chooses the spot where I'm drafting from. I will be in the five hole. Oh, Max got in. Max the animal. I'm about to snipe him every goddamn round. He's actually probably going to snipe me half the time. That how, that's how that works. I don't always pick in front of them. So this is on the Draft app, draft.com. If you are not already signed up, if you have not been practicing for your draft, make sure you do so. And you can add me, and I will invite you to the dozens of drafts that I do throughout the week to help you prep. Draft.com, use promo code BDGE when you sign up. You will get $3 to draft with. All of these drafts are, you can do free ones, but you can do it as low as a dollar, which means people are taking them seriously. So again, this is the best way to prep. We were in the first round. Oh, Cali Dog got in. We got Yannick. We got Animal. This is going to be a good draft. A lot of shit to talk today. Um, so, again, 12 team, half PPR. No kickers, no defenses. Mwah, just the way it should be. I'm at the 105. And this is an interesting spot because most people here would say easy pick. David Johnstein. And I say no. The only Johnstein we acknowledge is Ricky Johnstein. That is my alter ego. That is my fake name I use when I go out, when I used to go out in college to pretend to pick up girls, which never worked. But beside the point, DeAndre Hopkins. I will take one of these wide receivers over David Johnson all day and tomorrow. I've made this point. It's almost a moot point at this point. Wow. I just said point like 40 fucking times in a row. That was impressive. Um, their offense, the Cardinals offense has looked fucking terrible so far in the preseason. Like, I know everyone's excited only because Mike McCoy... It's like two ends of the spectrum where Mike McCoy was so bad last year that you have to get excited for the Cardinals this year. There is a very real chance that this offense and this whole thing in Arizona just doesn't work out. What we've seen so far in the preseason is David Johnson working as the workhorse. There we go. Animal fucking faded David Johnson at six. Went for Julio. I like that pick. That's probably what I would have done as well. Um... Dave Johnson's working as a workhorse. However, every single play, there is a ridiculous amount of penetration on the offensive line, which they did not do a good job whatsoever attacking in the offseason. They barely signed free agents. They didn't attack it in the draft. All they wanted to do was get weapons. And I understand, you know, that's how a college recruiter would work, right? You want to get weapons because in college, those explosive, up-tempo, playmaking shits work. Not in the NFL. Not up in here! Sorry, I'm excited. It's Friday. We got the second annual Big Dogs Gotta Eat Draft Weekend coming up. Actually, if you're watching this on Friday, then it's already in the middle of the draft week. I'm probably like four or five margaritas deep already, if we're being honest. Um, we will be live streaming the draft Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure if you enjoy this video, you hit that thumbs up button. David Johnson, they've looked terrible. I understand people are saying they're hiding their offense, but they're not creating fake plays to run. These are the these are the plays. These are a lot of the schemes that they're going to be running throughout the season. Might be at a little bit of a slower pace, but it, it's not working. The offensive line is getting crushed. David Johnson is getting hit in the backfield on every throw. He has not lined up in the slot on a single play. Maybe that's something they're hiding, but it looks like these are the plays that they're going to be running. Hasn't looked good. On another note, the Cardinals, Christian Kirk has only played on 13 of the 28 snaps that Kyle Murray has played on. That could be them resting him, but typically you want to get your ones all running together for the preseason, especially when it's on limited snaps like 28 from Kyler Murray. They just signed Michael Crabtree. I'm sorry for all the nonsense in the bike round. We're getting an addition to my apartment. We've been making some good money this summer, and I'm like, fuck it, let's build another room to put a jacuzzi in so I could just lay in it. My bathtub is kind of gross. So I said, fuck it, we're going to build a jacuzzi. I don't even know what I'm mumbling about anymore. These videos are hard to make, man. It's just like an hour-long stream of me spewing nonsense. Um, so they signed Michael Crabtree, which is weird. It doesn't really make sense to me because if they wanted a veteran presence, they could literally just look at their fucking depth chart and say, hey, Larry Fitzgerald is sitting there. So it's clearly looking to me like they have an issue with their current wide receiver group. I mean, Hakeem Butler is going to be on the IR, which maybe that is you know a little bit of a reason why they went 
outside Michael Crabtree because I think they're both you know possession guys that kind of sit, fit the same role. But the Christian Kirk thing is scaring me, and I talked about this on the BFFs podcast I went on yesterday on the Fantasy Sports Network. Um, I'm I'm so far out on Christian Kirk in like the sixth round of redraft leagues. I just don't think he's he's no longer a value. He was fun drafting later on in in the drafts when he was ninth tenth round because the upside was absolutely there but you're factoring in the downside now you're not factoring any any downside sixth round like he has to go for 900 a thousand yards and like six or seven touchdowns this offense might be terrible and you might have just wasted a six round pick which is very very um high level now i'm at the 208 we started off with who did i go with first i forget already um deandre hopkins and mike evans so mike evans has been out for the last week or so. He won't play in the Friday's preseason game. It's not supposed to be a major concern. Quad, groin. Uh, I will have Dr. Morse back on the channel this weekend. We're filming Sunday. It will be out Monday. I'm actually going to, you know, I'm going to hit him up right now. A dog. A dog. We're going to add Mike Evans to the list. We got doctors on speed dial. That's how we work in the HQ. Um, so we will be talking about Odell Beckham's hip. We will be talking about Mike Evans' quad, Cooper Cup's recovery, Emmanuel Sanders' recovery. Both guys who we were very weary about in the beginning of the season because these are long timetables to recover from ACL, from Achilles. But both guys reportedly have looked very good. And now we saw Emmanuel Sanders play very well. Um, so, you know, they're looking good over there. I love what Snyder just did at the, the, at the turn. So the way I'm looking at Minnesota this year, you know, and I don't usually look at stats. I don't usually look at, like, is someone getting targeted enough or X, Y, Z. I look at personnel usage. We already knew Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs are no-brainers, no doubt. The wide receiver one and two there. But the way this offense is running, like, Kirk Cousins was only looking at Adam Thielen. He was looking at Adam Thielen short on third downs, long. He got a bunch of deep passes thrown his way. And Adam Thielen looked damn good. So... I'm very nervous for Stephon Diggs. If this passing game takes a hit in their volume and Kirk drops down to, I don't know, like 520, 540 passing attempts, I'm really nervous that Diggs is no, there's no way he's going to return value at his third round pick. So I am up. Um, I already have three wide receivers. Now, you know, you might think, okay, carry on's an easy smash right here. And I probably am about to take carry on because I don't want to stack up only wide receivers and there's not much value on the board elsewhere. I would love T.Y. Hilton here if we had some encouraging Andrew Luck news. However, that is still not looking good. Now, why would I be hesitant to take carry on Johnson in the third round where, you know, Theo Riddick got cut. It's looking like he's going to be the guy. In their last preseason game, carry on Johnson got pulled on third downs every single time he was on the field. So he was running with the ones. They had three drives or whatever. Three times he got pulled, twice for C.J. Anderson, another time for Ty Johnson. That's what makes me nervous. If it's third and one, it's just a short yard situation, and C.J. Anderson runs in there and just rolls his meatball ass to a first down, sure, I don't need Carrion Johnson getting those, taking those hits. But the fact that Ty Johnson was in there, he's like a Carrion Johnson. He's a little bit faster, but he's like a Carrion Johnson light. So if you're going to play Ty Johnson with the first team on third downs, why not just play carry on? So, I mean, they've been talking about it being a running back by committee. Um, carry on Johnson's obviously the workhorse here. He's obviously going to be the RB1 in the backfield. But the preseason usage, guys, this is very, very important to make note of. And in the Big Dogs Draft Guide, which is available on BigDogsDraftGuide.com, in the Bible, after every single preseason week, Um, On top of the giant, yeah, you like that little intro picture? On top of the giant um, margarita that I'm drinking right there. It's a world record, 267-ounce margarita. I finished it all by myself. They're not actually there in the picture. I like that when I film with the webcam and I'm showing you guys something on the screen, I put my hand over the screen. I've done this like five or six times this summer, as if you guys can't see that. But it's literally only me that can't fucking see it. So we have an entire strategy write up on how to attack your fantasy draft position by position by position and then after each preseason week even kickers like that's how fucking in the grit i went why are the pictures not loading we're having trouble when we're running so much software at once after the preseason games we do a giant write-up of every game and all the big actionable takeaways one of them was about carry on johnson this week carry on where are you whatever you get the point. So 
he becomes a little bit more risky in the third round because, you know, there were a lot of reports about him being in a committee, but I didn't really believe it until we actually saw it on Friday or Saturday night, whenever they played. So, I still don't hate him as my RB1 there in the third round. Second round, he's definitely off the board. I'm not taking him in the second round. There's way too much risk. Um, but now he is a little bit scary. And you're seeing Amari Cooper drop because we talked to Dr. Morse. He's dealing with plantar fasciitis. That is an extremely fucking painful foot injury. Um, so I will be staying away from Amari Cooper this year. There's no shot he ends up on my team. Because he'll be going in the third or fourth round. And I will not invest a pick that high in a guy like Zett. Now, uh, we're getting into the third, fourth round. Um, one other note, you know, in the beginning of the summer, I was always talking about grabbing one of the top three tight ends in, even in best ball. In season-long leagues, there is, ooh, you motherfucker, Mark, you schnoiped me. I'm uh, curious to see what Animal does here because he loves Derrick Henry. And I also am curious to see where Melvin Gordon goes. I'm actually purposely not, oh, there you go. He took Melvin Gordon. Um, ooh, I'm thinking about Derrick Henry here in the end of the fourth round because I'm going to be light on... Running backs, I like Galladay, but that offense is going to be slow. I already invested in a Detroit line, and I'm not trying to get too many shares of them. I'm okay stacking players, if, especially even if they're two different skill players where they eat into each other's workload, if they're on good teams. So I'm actually going to go with Derrick Henry over Julian Edelman. Um, I'm a little bit lower on Julian Edelman consensus-wise than in the industry. We have a lot of, you know, recency bias is a huge thing, of course. And I think a lot of what we saw from Julian Edelman last year is being carried over into this year as a big recency bias thing. They're going to be adding a lot more weapons to the offense this year, right? Josh Gordon might play. Uh, Nikhil Harry is there. Um, all of the running backs are going to be healthy. And I think they're just going to go a lot more run heavy. So I question, I question the amount of volume that Julian Edelman's really going to get. So he's still a safe floor guy. But I don't know if I really need the wide receiver production there when I have DeAndre Hopkins and I have Mike Evans. So, wow, Mike Miles Sanders in the fourth round, huh? That's the earliest I've seen him go. I will not be taking him there. Um, Derrick Henry I got at the end of the fourth round. Now, Derrick Henry was dealing with a calf strain for about a, uh, a month. He returned to practice earlier this week. Um, he's still at a, a much higher re-injury risk rating. Um, I'm glad I got him in best ball. If you guys are new or unfamiliar with Draft, Draft.com, which you should go sign up for right now, go add me. My username is Nick Ercolano. When you sign up, use promo code BDGE. You will get $3 to draft with. Deposit 10 bucks. You will be able to run 10 mock drafts. You know, they take 20 minutes to do, 30 minutes to do. You'll be able to run 10 mock drafts and be fully prepared for your upcoming draft. So... Um, with a best ball draft, you don't actually have to choose who to start. Uh, the software automatically picks the best players available at each position each week to start for you. So, Derrick Henry is a guy who's going to be game scripted out of some games. Um, he's a, game, a guy that has bust potential on a week-over-week -week basis. So, I don't mind drafting him in best ball. Obviously, the calf is a concern for me. But if he can stay healthy for the next two weeks, right? He's got another two weeks, two and a half weeks to rest it, hopefully, and, and not pull anything. And if that's the case, I'll feel better about it. If he tweaks it, he's off my draft board completely. Ooh, damn, I was hoping Sonny Michelle fell to me. So, another thing that I've uh, learned recently... Ah, uh, good pick. I keep getting fucking schnoiped. Um, might go with a tight end here. I like O.J. Howard. He's played on almost every single snap with the first team so far. Him and Ingram are close for me, but if I'm going to choose one, I'd rather choose like a high-scoring passing offense, and that's going to be the Bucks. Even if they're not a good team, they're going to be a good... Uh, they're going to have a high-volume passing offense, and I'd rather that than Ingram, whose team might really not possess the ball that often. And they're going to give Barkley 500,000 touches. So, we'll go to O.J. Howard. Um, O.J. Howard, well, you know what? First of all, a couple guys that you need to be following on Twitter for preseason usage. This guy, context matters. I just found out about him, like, this week. At Dwayne McFarland is doing fucking God's work right now. And I apologize for all you religious people that I just put the F word next to God. It's not my intention. I curse because I can't help it. I actually don't know how to stop cursing. It's, it's, it's an issue. Context matters. He grinds. He does God's work for us. He's literally watching every game, breaking down who's playing where. Personnel usage. Snaps with the first team. Something interesting that he found was with Calvin Ridley... Do, 
Dwayne Johnstein. What the fuck? What the Quan? Um, where's latest? We actually had a conversation about it this week. So, Falcons preseason game two report, right? These are the biggest takeaways from preseason, is seeing who runs with the ones and what the usage is. No Julio, Russell Gage took a snap, Matt Ryan played three drives. Sanu played Z and slot. Ridley not on the field in 12 or 21 personnel. So, just like last year, Calvin Ridley was technically the third wide receiver, not in terms of production, of course, but in terms of snaps. He was a third wide receiver. And he will be again this year if we're going by preseason usage. So that does two things. That tells you that Ridley will be on the field about 10% or 15% fewer snaps than we originally intended. I think everyone was kind of in agreement that Ridley had automatically jumped Sanu after last year and he would be the wide receiver two in terms of snaps. They're obviously comfortable with Muhammad Sanu playing as a wide receiver two in two wide receiver sets um, and then moving into the slot when it's three wide receiver sets. So Sanu becomes an incredible value in best ball drafts. Calvin Ridley probably needs to get knocked down a little bit from that, you know, end of fourth, early fifth round range. I feel like he fits more into this tier here where it's like the DJ Moore and you're deciding between uh, DJ Moore and Cooper Cup and Robinson. And Cooper Cup is going to be a guy that, again, we discuss, me and Dr. Morris discuss on our next video this weekend. Stay tuned for that on Monday. Um, So speaking of some of these Titans players... Austin Eckler, Melvin Gordon. So we, we've heard already that Melvin Gordon's holdout is going to go into the season. I really don't think this is good news. I'm not sure why this is like a, a big deal. Like we already, I feel like we already knew that. So I believe the way it works is he has to return. Like he can't miss more than eight games. Um, otherwise it doesn't accrue towards free agency. So he can miss eight games, come back. I believe they have a week nine bye maybe. So he won't be on the field till week 10. Which means for the regular season of fantasy, depending on when your playoffs start, you might only have them for week 10, 11, 12, 13. If uh, you're in a a 12-team league and you have six teams make the playoffs, then your playoffs probably start in week 14. So you only have them for four weeks of the regular season. When are you willing to draft Melvin Gordon? I actually want to ask that. That is going to be the draft guide giveaway question of the day. So I like to give away draft guides as I do my videos. So the Big Dogs Draft Guide, which you can just go purchase on BigDogsDraftGuide.com, I do one giveaway a week, Um, and what I'll do is ask you a question, and if you comment and tell me why, you're automatically entered. So go comment in the comment section down below, where is the earliest you are willing to draft Melvin Gordon, knowing what we know now, that his holdout's going to go into the season, we don't know when, maybe they give in by week four, and they're like, fuck it, you know, we need a workhorse back, um... So they sign him. I doubt that's going to be the case. I think he hits the max games that he's okay, comfortable sitting out, and then he comes back to the team. So comment that down below. Melvin Gordon, earliest round that you're willing to take him and why. I need the big facts behind the answer. You'll automatically be entered into the giveaway as well as hitting the thumbs up button on the video. Um, So I went with OJ Howard as my last pick, damn it. Fucking animal could snipe on Curtis Samuel. I would have went with Curtis Samuel there. Um, All these guys I just don't like in this area. Mm. Tariq Cohen we know is going to get less usage with David Montgomery there. Is there any top-tier quarterbacks left? Nah. Watson's off the board. Aaron Rodgers is off the board. I have no Allen Robinson shares, really. So, you know what? I'm going with Will Fuller, actually. Obviously, he's going to be a boomer bust guy, depending on if he could stay on the field. But if he's on the field, Will Fuller is going to give us some fucking beautiful weeks with Watson. And now QT obviously hurt. I think he'll be very slow to start out the year if he doesn't even miss games to start the year. So I'm slowly getting onto the uh, onto the Will Fuller team, especially if you're getting him in the sixth, seventh round as your wide receiver three or wide receiver four. Because if he stays on the field, man, he could be a league winning pick for you as someone that you don't have to invest that heavily in. Like if you miss on your sixth or seventh round pick, it's, I mean, it sucks, obviously, but it's not the end of the world. It's much, much more risky to, you know, draft risky earlier on, rounds, the first three rounds, four rounds, because those guys are the ones that you need in your lineup. So I like Will Fuller in the sixth or seventh round. I think that's probably going to be my plan if a guy like Curtis Samuel or Tevin Coleman's not available there. Man, it's crazy how early that some of these wide receivers have been going compared to where they started the offseason. That's why I love draft. That's why you should join draft now. You'll have the account. And it will be set up for the beginning of the offseason next season. 
because they open up these drafts as soon as the season ends. So you could t- like Christian Kirk was. I'm pretty sure I have so many shares of Kirk as like a 14th round pick. Drawn on my Allison was like a 15th round pick. Um, a lot of these rookie running backs like Miles Sanders, David Montgomery were 14th, 15th round picks. They they throw the guys in right after the NFL draft, right before the NFL draft. Um, so no one knows where they're going to go, but you get a good feeling based on their athleticism and how they test it and stuff. Um, and their college production, you know, how highly they'll be drafted and, and you'll be able to get value on them in drafts. So I'm, I'm doing this all year round. So if you are new to this, again, add me, Nick Ercolano. Um, I will invite you to the drafts that I start throughout the week. Use promo code BDGE when you sign up. I think you can only add me via the phone app. Um, I, if you just search draft in the Apple Store or whatever. Wow, Jameson Crowder in the seventh round. J- ooh. MWH. Jeronimo Allison in the sixth round. Jameson Crowder in the seventh round. I got to see this team. What other questionable picks did we make? I mean, I like Kamara, obviously, but uh, not an Ingram guy, not an Antonio Brown guy. Was a big uh, Calvin Ridley guy until what I saw. Uh, Beautiful. So Marquez Valdez-Scantling fell to me there. I would take Valdez-Scantling over Jeronimo Allison. I've been vocal about that all summer. And uh, that will continue to be the case for me. Uh, Back to tight ends, though. I was talking about how in the beginning of the year, I wanted to leave the first three rounds with a big tight end. And I've also talked about how in season-long leagues, I will not be doing that. Because when you get to those fifth round, like that fifth, sixth round area, I don't see a lot of value at all. Like you can go through these picks and look, and it's just like literally from fucking, let's see, from like DJ Moore, or you can even probably even go earlier. Like, Evan Ingram, James White, all the way to, like, really, like, up to this pick, it's it's one clusterfuck of a tier. So, where I see value is at the tight end position. Like, if you're doing your season-long draft and you end up with Hunter Henry or Evan Ingram as your tight end one, you're going to be completely satisfied with that, right? Um, even Jared Cook. I like Jared Cook, too. So, in my opinion, when I go with the tight end early, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Zach Ertz within the top three rounds, it puts you in a really bad pickle with running backs and wide receivers. Um, so my strategy will not be to take one of those three guys, even if I think that they give you the best positional advantage at that time in the draft and they are the best player on the board. Um, they, I will not be doing that. Josh Gordon in the seventh round. Wow. Actually, also, I'm going to give two draft guides away. You got to answer both questions. So You'd answer Melvin Gordon, earliest round you'll take him, and why? I also want to know that answer for Josh Gordon. Earliest you'll be able to take, earliest you'll be willing to take Josh Gordon, and why? For me personally, Melvin Gordon is probably like a sixth round pick. Um, And I love Austin Eckler this year now. I still think I would take Melvin Gordon before Austin Eckler in the season long draft, but Austin Eckler is going to fucking bully people this year. He's looked so good this preseason. Um, He has out snapped Justin Jackson two to one. One of the biggest things to watch this this week in preseason is who gets the goal line work because Austin Eckler had just as many goal line carries last year as Melvin Gordon did and he played in limited games because he was hurt for some of them just as many this preseason he started off getting the goal line carries but then he fumbled on the two yard line and in the next series the ones played Justin Jackson got the goal line carry took it in for a touchdown so that is going to be something to watch. Who gets the goal line carries? Because we already know the receiving production is massive from the Chargers' backfield. Last year, running backs in L.A., not the Rams, excluding the Rams, running backs for the Chargers, 135 total targets, 104 receptions, 1,050 receiving yards, 7 touchdowns. Eckler is the pass-catching back in this backfield. Let me mute this, uh, let me mute this schmuck real quick. Eckler is a pass catching back in this backfield. That's not Justin Jackson. If Eckler secures the goal line work and the pass catching work, there is a very, 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 very good chance that he is just a borderline RB1 the entire season until Melvin Gordon comes back. So he might single-handedly like get you into the playoffs um, over the first half of the year because you, don't, you I mean, you only have to grab him in the seventh round. So I, I'm, I'm very high on Eckler. It's so funny because, like, I dressed for the Dynasty team. We did the, the Go Fade Me startup early on in the summer. Uh, I think we did it in, like, May or June. And my running backs were fucking Joe Mixon, Damian Williams, Melvin Gordon. And I'm like, yo, I'm stacked at running back. 
And I got them all at value, too, because I also have Julio Jones, Julian Edelman, Adam Thielen. And I'm like, oh, my God, my running backs are going to dominate my team. Boom, Melvin Gordon, hold out. Joe Mixon loses all of his fucking offensive linemen and A.J. Green. Um, Damian Williams, hurt, and then running back by committee. It's like, it's gotten pretty damn ugly there for my running backs quickly. Luckily, I have Matt Breida. Luckily, I handcuffed um, Melvin Gordon with Austin Eckler. So I'm feeling good about both of those guys. But it's just like, it got it got scary real quick. Um, now, I am up. Is there value at the wide receiver position? I like that Dante Pettis' value has finally fallen. So... A lot, I'm going to grab him here, and I'm going to explain why. A lot of weird reports are coming out that Dante Pettis was, you know, he had to earn his role. A lot of people thought he was going to be the de facto number one wide receiver in San Fran after the way he ended the year. And I was not on, I was not someone that was, like, buying into a Pettis breakout. Um, we saw it was a very small sample size, four to five games. Jimmy G was not the quarterback at the time, so we don't even know what the chemistry is like. Pettis is not really built to be a wide receiver one in the NFL, um, and then we, we heard all these reports, right? He got pushed up to, he was like a sixth round pick at some points. I saw him going like the early sixth of best ball drafts, completely out on him at that point. And then we're like, oh, he's running with the wide receiver twos. Debo Samuel, Jalen Hurd are getting all these ones. And then we saw last week's preseason game where D, uh, Dante Pettis played every single snap with the ones. It was Marquise Goodwin and it was Dante Pettis running as a wide receiver one, wide receiver two on every snap that Jimmy G was on the field. Jordan Matthews came on the field as the starting slot receiver when they went with three wide receivers. So, despite all the reports of him not running with the ones, he was the wide receiver one and on there for every snap. So, now that people are buying into the fake news, all this random hype without actually looking at preseason usage, his ADP has finally fallen back to where it's a respectable pick. End of the eighth round, I'm cool with Dante Pettis because if this offense actually plays well like a lot of people are expecting it to, Pettis will eat there as the wide receiver one. Um, obviously he's not the weapon one because Kittle is the guy there but um, I like the value all the way here at the end of the eighth round I have not taken a quarterback yet I would be okay grabbing Andrew Luck in like the ninth round or so I'm kind of hoping Matt Ryan falls to me what I always do in in best ball drafts is try to stack um, a quarterback with a weapon on the team that I have so I'll look at my weapons usually wide receivers Sean Watson's gonna be off the board I can grab Jameis Win- Ooh, a Jameis Winston OJ Howard um Mike Evans stack would be beautiful right here. Boom. Okay, it fell to me. Last video I made, I remember I went nuts because I stacked up Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks, and then someone fucking sniped me on Jared Goff the pick before. So we're going to go Jameis Winston here. Even though I do think the better value is Cam Newton, I'm going to go with Jameis Winston here. I will grab Cam Newton if he falls back to me in the next round, although I don't think it will happen. Um, great pick by Animal. There you go. Stacking Cam Newton, Curtis Samuel. I've taught you too well, Animal. I've taught you too fucking well. Uh, So I'm hurting at running back, clearly. Uh, I need to probably grab some of these guys. And I see Jalen Samuels, who I like. I would would actually go with Justin Jackson. I didn't take Eckler, did I? No. I'm not really looking at... In best ball, I do not take, like, handcuffs. There goes one. I'm not going to get Matt Breida. I'll grab Peyton Barber here, though. I won't get... Ooh, I'll grab either Tony Pollard or Peyton Barber if Matt Breida doesn't fall to me. Okay, Matt Breida doesn't fall to me. Eventually, I've finally gotten the hype up to where Matt Breida is in the ninth round. He needs to be in the ninth round. I would even probably go into the eighth round. Him and Coleman are going to split snaps like evenly. And this was something I wrote up in the preseason takeaway. The snaps were split pretty much 55 to 45 with Jimmy G on the field. They were using their running backs beautifully. I loved it. They were using them out wide. They were lining up out wide. They were using them in wheel routes out of the backfield, which Matt Breida was targeted on one of them. They were putting them in motion into the slot during the pre-snap motion. Like, this Kyle Shanahan offense is going to make both... I think both both guys are good picks right now because Jarek McKinnon's basically out of the picture. I hope fucking Max picks Jarek McKinnon. I feel like he's gonna. In like the 15th round, so I could shit on him. Matt Breida, Tevin Coleman, in my opinion, are both buys. I would rather take Breida at value because I think he's a better athlete. Um, and I'm all in on Breida. Tomorrow's video is going to be a good one for you guys. It's the do not draft running backs list. So we have about six or eight running backs on that list not to draft. And again, also, also, big caveat here. There are about six preseason games played tonight that I have not factored my analysis into, of course, because it's I'm filming this on a Thursday. There will be six preseason games tonight which I obviously have not watched yet. So if anything big happens in the third preseason game, which is always a big game, so there will be a lot more analysis to take away from, that will obviously not be factored into what I'm saying now. 
but it will be in the Big Dogs Draft Guide preseason week three write-up. I usually let the games play out that night, and then I immediately do their game-by-game write-ups the next morning. So, again, if you have not caught the Draft Guide, one, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, because it's literally... I'm confident enough to say this. I usually don't like to use like a sales thing. But this is the best piece of fucking draft guide prep that you could possibly get. If you've caught the draft guide, do me a favor and go pitch these motherfuckers down in the comment section below. Let them know that this is literally... I'm not just trying to make money. I think this is the most valuable thing that you can buy for yourself to help you prep for the draft, man. Um, so go do yourself a favor. CopBigDogDraftGuide.com. Go grab it. It's the only prep you need for your drafts. And uh, did everyone go off the board that I liked? All the running backs? Tony Pollard. Max is going to snipe Tony Pollard. I'll put fucking money on it. Don't do me like this. Don't do me like this. Hey. Ooh. I don't like that pick by Anthony Miller at all. Well, maybe in best ball it's okay. So I'm going to grab Tony Pollard. Made this point a few times as well. Listen, if you were willing to invest the pick in James Conner last year, there should be no reason why you're not willing to invest the pick in Tony Pollard. Worst case scenario, you just missed out on a 10th, 11th round pick. Best case scenario, you're literally getting the starting Dallas Cowboys running back people. Like, you just got an RB1 in the 10th round. He has played every single snap with the first team in preseason so far. Six touches on their first drive. This one is that guy. Um, Let me hold on. Sorry, we got a lot of behind-the-scenes shit going on for the draft weekend. Um, Any all text like that like I text exactly how I write um, I like take breaths in between my sentences and shit and that's exactly how I text so I'll send like 42 text messages at a time and people probably get fucking big mad about it so yeah Tony Pollard I have no idea what's going on with Zeke I'm not gonna pretend like I do but I you might as well for a 10th round pick you might as well invest that 10th round pick into Tony Pollard 10 out of 10 times because we know what we're getting if things break right. Um, what the freak was I talking about? Oh, okay. So Anthony Miller, my, my, I, you all know, I love Anthony Miller as the player. However, he's dealing with this ankle sprain. And then we saw this report today, uh, come out about Miller. Where art thou? Anthony Miller could play a limited role in the first few weeks of the season because of the OTA, uh, because of the ankle injury. That's a huge concern for me in season-long drafts. Oh, fuck, I'm on the clock. Um, fuck it, bro. I'm going to take Kiki QT. I feel like that's a... In the 11th round, I used to take him in like the 7th round. Like, what a fucking ridiculous question by Steve. So, Fantasy Jocks, shout out to FantasyJocks.com. If you need any draft boards or championship belts for your league or whatever, go to FantasyJocks.com. I will link them down below. I got a little affiliate thing that if you go through, I get a little bit of kickback. So, if, you know, if you're appreciating the video, that's how you hook a brother up. Um, yeah, they sent me a box for the NYC draft weekend with a draft board and championship belt and shit. And I told Steve I need him to pick it up because he's going to New Jersey beforehand. He's going to be with me, helping me out for the whole weekend. He's going to New Jersey to pick that up from my house. He's going to bring it to Brooklyn tomorrow. And he just fucking asked me if he could keep it in the back of his car. Like, I don't know, Steve. Is the, is the fucking draft board going to melt in the back of your car? I'm sorry. It's a legitimate question, I guess. Um, good pick by Michael Gallup because we don't want Amari Cooper with plantar fasciitis. That shit hurts and it's going to linger for the entire year. Thus, Michael Gallup might become the de facto wide receiver one there. Steve, you can't be saying the C word on camera. How dare you? Um, who did I just take with my last pick? I have already six wide receivers, so I probably need to stop drafting wide receivers because that position is going to be set for me there. 
I'm so happy that people were taking Damian Harris with like their fucking seventh and eighth round picks for no reason whatsoever. Enough, Steve. Leave me alone. Um, wow. Tight end situation is getting ugly. We get in ugly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Kiki QT. Oh, so back to Anthony Miller. Okay, so if he's playing in, uh, if he's playing a limited early season role, and he's already a late round pick, that means he's going to end up on the waiver wire. If you draft a guy in the twelfth to thirteenth round and he doesn't perform over the first two to three weeks, that's going to be the first guy you drop. If you draft someone in the fifth or sixth round and he doesn't perform over the first couple weeks, you're going to hold on to him. But these are the first guys that you drop right away. So Anthony Miller. We know he's a little banged up. We don't know what his role is going to be. We don't know if Mitch Trubisky is going to be any good this year. So he's already got some red flags there. Now you factor in the fact that he might play in a low early season volume role. That almost guarantees me that he's going to be on the waiver wire within the first three weeks of the season in your league. So rather than using a 11th or 12th round draft pick on him, what I would do is take a guy like Devin Singletary, who you can get in the same spot. And Devin Singletary might take over as the RB1 in that backfield over the first month of the season. You never know. So I'm definitely going with more high upside than uh, than a guy like Miller. So that's a little thing. If, if you think that, like, if a late round pick is going to have a very small early season role, they're going to end up on the waiver wire very soon. Because those are the first guys that people drop. So just a little, uh, little tip there. And again, y'all, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you're listening via podcast, I would very much appreciate uh, a rating and review could be one star I, I slap the fuck out of you if you give me a one star make it a five star make it a damn five star oh my god my noties are going freaking nuts eh? hey oh, that's too much I can't read I can't read good. Yo, is anyone else? So, I'm actually curious. Actually, let's talk some fucking business real qu right quick after I make this right quick pick. Animal, please take Carl aside. Stay fucking on brand. Stay on brand here. Do what your heart is telling you. Nicole Hardman, interesting. Uh, who do I have as quarterback? Jameis Winston. Can't get Aaron Rodgers. Can't get Deshaun Watson. I'm not taking Jimmy G because he looked like trash. Uh, I'm probably going to take my second quarterback. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm actually going to wait and grab Sam Darnold as my second quarterback. I need running backs because I am hurting right there. I will take Damian Harris at the end of the 12th round all day and tomorrow. Because that's where he should be going. And we never know how this backfield is going to work out. So I'm in, on, uh, I'm in on Damian Harris in the 12th round. But I'm not on him in, in, in the 9th round. A talk on business. So, uh, I brought up that guy, Context Matters, before. I, my bad. Uh, Dwayne McFarland, I believe his name is. You know, I a lot of the behind-the-scenes videos that I do, I, I had a, um, a series where I would interview influencers, but nothing about fantasy football. I would, influ I would interview influencers in the fantasy football space, but no player analysis or anything like that. I would talk to them about building their brand and building their business if they are building a business and the marketing and the social engagement behind fantasy football. And it's always like bringing something unique to the table. That is the way that you, you know, that is the way that you get out and branch out and eventually grow. Now, being unique doesn't, it, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to find a unique statistic that you're providing to the fantasy football community. It doesn't mean that you are a unique personality. You know, there's a lot of boring ass people in the fantasy football industry that make it big because their information is good or this, that, and the other thing. These motherfuckers got to stop drilling next to my apartment. I feel like I can call the police and be like, yo, police, tell them to shut the front door. And then they'll be like, you shut the front door. It's literally your apartment, bro. Um, what he's doing is going to gain him a following very quickly. Context matters. I'm already a huge fan of that guy, and I'm already promoting it to you guys. And this is a video that I'll probably get upwards of thirty to 40,000 views. So he just got an extra thirty to 40,000 page views on his Twitter. He is a three-time FFPC high-stakes top five finisher. Those are leagues that are monster buying money. So he knows what he's doing. Um, but he's doing something very unique. You know, As people get more... Uh, attentive to what's going on in preseason because it affects fantasy football to a very high degree. You know, we talk about usage and stuff. People are going to get more in tune with, with what's going on in the preseason, but not a lot of people provide information based on what's going on in the preseason. So that is such a very a niche market where I think that he could um, potentially 
really grow his brand that way. And it's something... Sorry, I just want to make a pick real quick. Um, we're still going to wait on... Actually, I don't know if Darnold's going to fall to me at the end of the next one. So I'm going to grab Darnold. I really, he's looked so fucking good. I think... You know, I've been saying I think the breakout might be coming later than expected. I bet Max gets goes with Ty Montgomery here. Uh, I bet Sam Darnold's breakout... I, I've been saying I think Sam Darnold's breakout is probably a year away. But, man, he has looked so good this preseason. Um, ah, Kirk, nice. I probably should have went with Kirk. I feel like Kirk's floor is probably Darnold's like breakout season. Dumbass pick by me. But, um, so he's doing something very unique. Like, he's literally watching every single game of the preseason, telling you who's running the, with the ones, who's doing the snaps. And it's not that, it's not hard, right? It's just a lot of work that you have to put into it. And if any of you guys out there are looking for a way to break in, preseason usage is very, very valuable. I mean, it's almost over already. You really only have four weeks to diagnose and dive into it. But it's an untapped market potential for fantasy football. Um, so that is what you need to do. You need to find something unique. It could be a stat. It could be your personality. It could be the fact that you know you were the first to market on YouTube. I think that first to market on Twitch. Someone's going to blow up on Twitch eventually. Um, there's going to be a lot of different ways in order to breakthrough. But you always need to be looking at those out of bounds ways. Whatever got you there, whatever got someone else there, whoever you're looking up to, whoever, if it's an influencer, if it's fucking Matt Berry, if it's Andy Holloway, the footballers, if it's fucking me for whatever reason, which I should not be your role model. Whatever I did, whatever they did to get to where they're at is not going to be the way you're going to get to where you want to be. I can promise you that with 100% certainty because these things are a process and they take very long to accomplish. I've been doing this shit for three fucking four years now before I saw anything pay off. Three, four years. So if you're trying to do what I'm doing and you're willing to put the work in for three to four years, I already know 99.9999999999% of y'all will not be willing to put the work in that I've put in. But if you do, by the time three or four years comes around, YouTube will not be, you, you can't break through on YouTube. There's new guys coming in every fucking day. Shout out to, uh, actually, let me give a shout out to one of the YouTube channels, first of all. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Fantasy Football Profit. Uh, not because their analysis is any good, but because... Uh, did they change? Ah, uh, they changed their wide receiver rankings thumbnail. Because last time I checked, they straight up stole my wide receiver rankings thumbnail and then slapped their logo on top of my uh, logo. So I wanted to give them a shout out because, listen, if you're in the market for a graphic designer, I know a guy. Um, he goes by fucking Nick Ercolano. So don't steal my fucking thumbnails, bitch. Anyways. Um, yeah, YouTube's going to be very saturated because you have guys like this hopping onto YouTube every single day and just putting out mass shitty volume of content. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break because I realize I am a giant asshole and I would like to make a massive apology to Fantasy Football Profit. And we're going to turn that energy over to Fantasy Football Profits. Now this is that we meant to bash. There is my thumbnail. Fantasy Football Profit. Good people. I apologize. Fantasy football profits. Frauds, as you can see. Wide receiver rankings. That is mine. You see that? With my logo. We go bike. And that is theirs. They just slapped their logo over it. Congrats to you guys. A lot of hard work you put into that. I appreciate you. You're the GOAT. And it saturates it. And in three to four years down the road, you're going to be on a fucking completely new social platform that no one knows about. If so, fact though, I need Chris Herndon right now. Max, don't take Chris Herndon, you piece of shit. It's another stack for me, Darnold Herndon. I love Chris Herndon. I've been drafting him as my tight end too in like the 14th round of every best ball draft. Don't, don't do it to me. Fuck yeah, okay. Well, I was one round late on my Ty Montgomery call, but I'm gonna love this stack of Chris Herndon uh, and Sam Darnold. Now, I know Herndon's out for the first four games. That is fine, but he's looked like a beast this preseason, and I think you have a legitimate top 12, probably top 10 or top 8 tight end when Herndon gets back on the field uh, in week six because they have four-game suspension. They have a week five bye, I believe, and uh, and then I'm stacked up with Chris Herndon and O.J. Howard. I got, I got a lot of stack. This is probably the most stacking I've done on one best ball team in a minute. Let's look at the team so far. So we have Jameis Winston, 
And Sam Darnold is my quarterbacks. At running backs, we have carry on, Derrick Henry, Tony Pollard, Damian Harris. Yeah, I'm going to need some work. I'm about to have to go probably seven running backs. I typically go with a roster of two quarterbacks, two tight ends, six running backs, seven wide receivers, and that equates to 17. So I obviously need another one. So I'll see if my tight ends are really weak. Oh, since I've been going with Chris Herndon so often and he's going to be out for four games, I usually grab a third tight end to supplement um, the tight end spot for the first four weeks of the season or five weeks because he's going to be out five weeks. Um, I'll usually go with two quarterbacks. But I'll also, you know, just use your fucking brain. Use common sense because my wide receivers are DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Evans, Will Fuller, MVS, Dante Pettis, Kiki QT. They're stacked. I'm not going to need to go with seven or eight wide receivers. Um, Plus, at this point in the draft, I actually think there's like very... Oh, I actually love Rashard Higgins. Max is going to be pissed when I snipe him. Fuck, I shouldn't go with seven wide receivers, but I love Rashard Higgins in the 15th, 16th round. He is the wide receiver three there in Cleveland, and whoever the wide receiver three is is going to eat with Baker. And we've already seen a ton of rapport. We've seen a ton of chemistry and connection between Baker and um, Baker and Rashard Higgins. Now, I want to bring up another tweet that I put out. Hey, let's fucking go. I bet you, uh, well, I have him on do not disturb mode, but I bet you once I make this pick, I'm going to get a text from Animal within five seconds. Actually, probably within like a minute or so. But I tweeted this out a couple days ago. Pretty much the only guys I've been actively targeting in rounds 13 to 18 of best ball drafts the last two weeks. Tony Pollard. I obviously got him in the 10th round, but I'm very. it was just the premise of where their ADPs were at the time. Tony Pollard, the RB1 in Dallas as long as Zeke is out. Chris Herndon, very high upside when he gets back from suspension. TJ Hawkinson, I just think he has a, a lot higher floor than a lot of people are giving him credit for. He's going to be playing a three-down role in the Detroit offense. Um, Muhammad Snu, I already kind of explained that, why he is running as a wide receiver too, as well as in the slot when Calvin Ridley is out. Rashard Higgins, that's my boy. Also love Damian Hillard. I'll probably grab him with my next pick if I can get him. Duke is gone. They need someone in the pass-catching role there. And we've already seen the connection between Higgins and fucking Baker Mayfield does look real too. He's running with the ones. Rashard Higgins, I mean, uh, Damian Hillard has been running with the ones as the pass-catching back there in Cleveland. We'll have to see what happens when uh, Kareem Hunt returns, but I'm not really worried about 10 weeks down the line. Um, Damian Hill is going to eat for the first eight, eight, nine weeks of the season. And in the 15th or 16th round of best ball, I'm all in on that. Teddy Ginn also, dude. I feel like Teddy Ginn's getting no goddamn respect here. He's running ahead of Traquan Smith right now. He's the wide receiver two there. Um, and last year, it's not like it's not like he slowed down or fell off the end of the fucking earth when, when the season was ending. Um, he still put up for someone you can get in the 17th or 18th round. Like his... His end game, his last few games when he came back for the playoffs, 5 for 74, 3 for 44, 3 for 58, 8, 7, 6 targets. So he was still very much involved. He missed a very big portion of the season, of course. But once he came back, he was healthy. And, and again, he didn't, it's not like he lost his job to Traquan Smith. And that's the other thing about Traquan. Like, I like the hypothetical upside. But he showed us almost nothing last year. He had two good games. One of them was against the Redskins where Breeze broke the record. And all of the, the secondary, the coverage on Traquan was completely broken. Um, so he had two Hail Marys. Ha. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, Animal just texted me. He goes, Steve just came for the camera. Steve, I told you, is helping me out behind the scenes. He goes, Steve just came for the camera, and I auto-picked cock sandwich. <laughs> um, so Traquan Smith had, like, two good games. One, Ah, good snipe, James Brockman. Um, and one of them was basically just a blown coverage, which gave him the big game. And with Teddy Ginn out, Traycon Smith was not able to take over that role. He was not able to secure the role. There's been a lot of reports that he was not even running as a wide receiver three. It was like Keith Kirkwood. So I, I, I'm pretty much off on Traquan Smith. I like the upside, I guess, just based on his athleticism, his college production. But it was at a small school. And a lot of the times, the guys who meet those other criteria but don't end up you know, working out in the NFL are because their level of competition in college were not very good. So I'm a fan of, Traquan, of uh, Teddy Ginn down there. Who else is on the list? Malcolm Brown. I'm not buying into any of the Darrell Henderson hype. Um, you, I will not touch him anywhere near the single-digit rounds. I've been pretty steadfast about that throughout the entire summer. Malcolm Brown seems to be the RB2, and he is the beneficiary if Todd Gurley gets hurt. Ty Montgomery is run as the clear-cut workhorse three down back in Le'Veon Bell's absence. I think that Ty Mont is going to have a role in this offense. I don't think it's going to be Le'Veon Bell running 95% of the plays. I just, I just don't see it. So I need to smash the running back position here, and there's not a lot of value. I kind of like Gus Edwards because I don't 
love Mark Ingram, but there's just as good of a chance that Gus Edwards gets cut as Kenneth Dixon does, so that makes me scared. Brian Hill I like a lot too, but I also don't know if they're going to cut Brian Hill. I mean, who's going to be the wide uh, running back too? Is it Brian Hill? Is it Ido Smith? <laughs> Hill looked really good, and then Ido Smith looked good last, last time. Oh, God, it's really ugly here. I wish I would have went with more running backs early on. Um, I think Chris Thompson will have a pass-catching role. I'm going to go with Chris Thompson here. Obviously, the injury concern is, is there because his history of injuries is really fucking deep. But the Redskins are going to compete for the number one overall pick in next year's draft. They're going to be a really fucking bad pick, really bad team, which means they're going to be trailing a lot. So these Adrian Peterson, Derek, Darius Geis grinders who are going to get the first and second down carries, not going to be that valuable because they're never going to have the game script in order to really be valuable. I think if Chris Thompson can stay healthy, um, he'll have a lot of big games where he catches, you know, five, six, seven passes. So right now where I'm desperate as fuck at the running back position, um, I'm okay with a, uh, with, with a Chris Thompson pick here. Beep bop boop, beep bop boop, beep boop bop. Um, I don't know, bro. I don't fucking know. I'm tired. <coughs> My throat hurts. My back hurts. Can you guys just go hit, give the thumbs up button, please? Can you guys go sign up on draft.com? I have almost a thousand friends that have signed up already. I have almost a thousand friends on my profile, which means almost a thousand of y'all have signed up and added me, which is really fucking cool. I have so many more internet friends than I have real life friends. What size shoe am I? What the fuck are you asking me for my shoe size, Steve? Steve 100% asked me my shoe size because he's in my house right now at home, and I didn't bring all my shoes to my apartment in Brooklyn, and he's probably looking at my shoes like, I want this, so he's testing me. And if I tell him the wrong size, he's going to be like, well, these shoes aren't that size anymore, so now they're fucking mine. And fucking bullshit. I mean, Steve's relationship is pretty funny. We're kind of like the best friends out of a fucking movie. Like, when we lived in the same town together, he would just walk into my house unannounced, and I would do the same. On Sunday mornings, when I used to live stream every Sunday, which I will be doing throughout the season, by the way. Oh, I'll grab Gus Edwards here now. Fuck it. Um... I'll be live streaming every Sunday before kickoff, probably from 11.30 to 12.30 a.m. Eastern time, p.m. for 12.30, but like an hour leading up to kickoff to help you guys with any sit-start questions. I'll probably be hungover most of the time. It won't actually be helpful, but it'll, it'll be a fun time. We used to do it, and you know, back in the day when I didn't have any kind of following base, there used to be like 15 people watching me on the live stream. It was like super personal, and Steve would always be in the live streams with me. On Sunday mornings, his parents are religious, so they used to tell him to go to church. So they'd make him go to church. And what he would do is just leave his house, take his car, or walk, and pretend he was going to church. He'd tell his parents he was going to church. And he would literally fucking just come to my house. He would walk into my house on Sunday mornings while his parents thought he was at church. So if you've ever watched, if you ever watched the live streams, or if you, if you go back like two years and watch my live streams on Sunday mornings, I think I put them up on YouTube. I'm not sure if I deleted them. I feel like at that time I was cursing a lot and saying a lot of ignorant things that I shouldn't have been saying on the internet. So I probably delete them, deleted them. But if you could find some gems back on bike, bike in the day, Steve will be there. And it, it's because he pretended that he was at church at the time. Good times. Life was simpler at that time. And I didn't have fucking 30,000 people watching what I say. I got to be cognizant of that, huh? I don't think I fucking knew the word cognizant, did you? I don't even know if I used that correctly. I did. I know I did. Who else do I want that's a running back? I don't want any of these fucking guys. I might just take make make a ridiculous pick. I might take Jeremy McNichols or Mike Boone. Both of them have been balling out. But I want to make like a ridiculous pick here. Let's go with... Uh... Fat Rob Kelly, huh? What's he up to? It's got to be with Eddie Lacy. Enjoying Chinese food on the regular. Maybe I'll show some respect to Matt Forte. No, we're definitely going Eddie Lacy here. Hundo P. My final pick of the draft is going to be Eddie Lacy. I bet he brings home the fucking title for me this year. If Eddie Lacy fucking wins me this league, 
I'm going to give away $1,000 cash to somebody. That's it. That's the fucking proposition I just bet. So screenshot that. Video record it. Betty Lacey comes bike, wins me this league, $1,000 cash to every single person that watched this video. Woo! Stakes are high, baby. I'm really running out of steam, huh? Uh, I actually wrote down a couple notes about people I wanted to talk about and didn't talk about, so we could talk about them now. DK Metcalf, going through a knee scope. He's a late-round pick already, a guy that's entering the year with, an er with a low roll. It fits exactly the criteria I talked about for Anthony Miller. DK Metcalf will be on the waiver wire within the first couple weeks. We saw Russell Wilson attempt nine passes in their last preseason game. Four of them went to Tyler Lockett. It is officially Tyler Lockett in the fourth round every single time season. Three of them went to Jerron Brown. Now, Jerron Brown's like 30 fucking years old, but he's super athletic. And he might be the most trusted wide receiver behind Tyler Lockett. So, Jerron Brown's actually not a bad draft pick here. I wish I didn't go so many damn wide receivers and went with some other running backs earlier on in this draft. Because like, I could take a guy like Jerron Brown and feel pretty good about it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't, and I'm dumb. And... Um, that was that. And Chris Carson got the other two targets, I believe. So, DK Metcalf is an easy fade in season long. He will be on the waiver wire. Jerron Brown becomes interesting in best ball drafts. Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy. The other thing, uh, Vance McDonald. There was a report that came out from their OC. I think his name was Randy Fitchner, the Fitch, Fitchinator. That said, it seemed like there was a lot of energy behind this quote. Like, he was mad about something. I don't know what happened. Someone must have fucking sniped him on a stack in the best ball league or something right before he made this report. Because it seems like it was personal. Where, are, where art thou? When asked if Vance McDonald will see increased playing time in 2019, Steelers OC Randy Fitchner replied, he won't, he's never going to play the full game. That's never going to happen. Like, you don't go out of your way to be that pissed off about it. Like, just relax. You could just be like, no, he's not really a full-time player. We have other good guys who can contribute. So those are going to be like, he's never going to do that. It's never going to happen. Because he's run on every fucking first team snap in the preseason. So you could say it's never going to happen, but you're literally doing it. So be weary, of the, uh, be weary of the situation. Vance McDonald should be the tight end one there. Not the tight end one, but should be an elite tight end one from a snaps perspective. Because last season he shared snaps 50-50 with Jesse James. Now Jesse James is gone. Antonio Brown is gone. So there's a lot of targets, a lot of snaps opening up. And Vance McDonald has basically played on every snap with the first team so far this preseason. So, despite the reports of him saying he won't be a three-down tight end, he has played like it, this preseason game will be a big teller of whether or not Vance McDonald will be seeing, you know, 70, 80, 90% of the snaps with the first team. So, looking forward to that. A lot of things I'm looking forward to tonight in the preseason. Again, my game-by-game -game write-ups will be available the next morning in the draft guide. Make sure you go cop that at BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Make sure you are ready for the live stream. We're doing a real fucking live draft. It's a 12-team or half PPR Superflex. 1 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. It's going to be a great fucking draft. I'm going to be... You will get my best margarita recipe during that. Something I don't normally put on uh, on YouTube. I try to keep that to myself. I always try to make sure all the dogs are eating. But I don't always make sure all the dogs are drinking. Now you will have my best margarita recipe if you join me. 1 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you go sign up on Draft, draft.com or the Draft app, people. Sign up using promo code BDGE. It will be the best prep you can do for your 2019 fantasy football draft. You'll get $3 when you use BDGE. Add me. I will invite you to some drafts this week. I want to get up to 1,000 friends on draft.com. If I could do that, that'll equal one real world friend. And that's all I need, baby. I'm out. It's great seeing you this, this beautiful Friday morning. I pray to God that the volume is on, and I pray to God that I recorded this because that was just so much energy and a, a lot of big facts. I love you.